five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and we go until, yes, you know what it is, midnight tonight, Eastern Time. Let's go to talk to a friend, okay? Okay, let's do what we always do. Uh, we call out to Las Vegas and we talk to our good friend. Stephen Pearl, if he's there. There, it's ringing now. Mm -hmm. I told you, never call me when I'm whacking off over pictures of Nancy Walker. <laughs> I'm an old-fashioned guy. That Planet of the Apes haircut just turns me on. Hello? You know, what's amazing uh, is that you come up with such uh, just... It references that no one listening to this program right now would even understand. Nancy, I know, isn't it great? Nancy Walker, my fucking God, Jesus Next week Christ. we'll have some Joe Dorita references. Oh, well, Joe Dorita, at least some people would know because they go, oh, well, that was, you know, that was the other Curly. He was the, un yeah, he was the unfunny Curly. He was the unfunny Curly. He was not funny yeah. at all, was he? Oh, he, yeah. I'll, I'll, okay, guys, I'll join the Stooges, but you can't hit me, and I won't say woo-woo. Oh, hey, Mo, where the fuck now? What are we going to do? Well, I even came up with a song, Joe Dorita, shitty Stooges. He would not let Mo hit him. He would not take up high or say woo-woo, and there's a lot more, but, you know, yeah. once a year. Because I, I, uh, um, I was thinking about it, and, um, you know, I mean, I was never a big Three Stooges fan. Okay, but I do uh, know about anyway. them, and I do know their history, and I do do know that the original Curly was to begin with not a bad looking guy. In fact, he was very big with the women when he first yeah, started out, sure. and then they made him get fat, and he stopped mm -hmm. getting laid, and that was that was enough to depress him. Yeah, they made him you fat, and they get fat, and they shaved his head, and boy, that fucked him up. Yeah, but he but was he, he loved them for it. He was maybe the most beloved stooge would you say oh yeah because he was the most childlike so you know he was uh, everybody loved curly yeah and uh but curly of the three was the ladies man people don't realize that yeah uh he, yeah i think mo and larry were like happily married anyway and curly was it yeah hey, uh, hey mo i'm going to the club tonight now did curly quit or did curly die uh curly had a stroke and he had to quit and then he died I see. But uh, there is, after the stroke, there's one episode that uh, all all four of them are in, Mo, Larry, Shemp, and Curly. Because Curly played a snoring passenger on a train. And uh, you can see him, and he had a full head of hair. His hair had grown out by then, so a lot of people didn't know it was him. Oh, do you know, what, what, but, do you know which one that is? What it's called? Oh, yeah, I can look it up. On, I could Google it, which is the three students with both Curly and Shemp in it. Yeah. I can look that up. And, uh, now, and now can, uh, a lot of people, there. Shemp replaced Curly, but he didn't exactly replace Curly because uh, he didn't try to do Curly. Uh, no, yeah. he was also a stooge before Curly. Yes, and uh, I think when they in the early days, and then he, he left to do solo, and he replaced Curly after he well, got Well, he, he was one. He was a you know he officially was a stooge. I mean, he was yeah. he, he was one of the brothers. You know. Yeah, and he was funny in his own right. He was hysterically funny. Well, in his own he, right. what happened was he he got out of the Stooges and went into just being an actor and a regular actor in movies and appeared in tons of films. Oh yeah, you see, he was a bartender or a fight promoter or something like that. Yeah, uh, some, some, yeah. Uh, and yeah, he was working very, man role. He was very successful. So, what brought him back to the Three Stooges? Did they just say, "Hey, we we got to replace Curly"? I think, yeah, I think they just needed him. And they uh, oh, come there, and most my brother Larry doesn't mind getting his hair pulled out and smacked in the face. So, I think I'll join. Yeah. Now he now um um uh, uh, let's see, Mo Larry Curly Larry was the only non brother, right? Yeah, yeah, he was very fine. He was a, he was a friend. Yeah, yeah. He played. He's got an actor. He played the violin, and then uh, he joined the Stooges, and the rest is history. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, I never, I just never found them. Did you find them funny? Oh, you when I was a kid, I loved them, and I watch them now, and I like them. So, yeah, well, I'm, a, I'm a Stooges fan. I mean, I kind of, I understand it. You know, the, the, <laughs> the, you know, I understand the uh, the uh, the whole appeal of the Stooges to some people, mm-hmm. but I just never found them funny. I, you know, um, yeah, they were they're funny. And I'm, I guess, on the lowest level, but I, I like silly shit that really doesn't make any sense. Well, it was like three guys with silly haircuts, with one of them beating the crap out of both of them, so, and all these crazy sound effects that you would never hear in real life. Yeah, and if anyone did that to someone in real life, they'd be dead. Yeah. But I, you know, when I was a kid, and we used to go to the Saturday matinee. Boy, there's 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 something nobody knows about the Saturday. Oh matinee. God, yeah, that's extinct. <laughs> do, do you remember the Saturday matinee yourself? You must, of course. Yeah, yeah. Sure, and, and, sense, man. You see like two or three monster movies or something. Yeah, but no, you would usually it would be. Uh, unfortunately, I it would normally be a western, which I never. Uh-huh. That, they never really appealed to me as, a, although I, you know, I mean, I did watch them and I did uh, know Roy and Gene and, you know, uh-huh. uh, uh, who were a few of the others? Charles Starrett, uh, the Durango uh-huh. Kid, right? Um, Good old Tom Mix killed by his luggage. Well, uh, what? <laughs> Tom Mix was killed by his luggage. He made like a short stop in his car and all this luggage in the back went forward and broke his neck. I didn't know that. Yes, look it up. Tom Mix was killed by his luggage. Jeez almighty. Now, Tom, yeah. Tom Mix is before me. You know, the well, only... He died in 1940. <laughs> well, well the, only, the only Tom Mix that I knew, okay, was the radio program. And it was... Uh-huh. They always announced it as Curly Bradley as Tom Mix. Uh-huh. Uh and and Curly Bradley played Tom Mix and they had all these stories about Tom Mix but I think he was dead by the time the radio show went on. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Or he may go. have he may have been on it earlier and then when he died uh-huh. they replaced him with Curly Bradley. How do I remember yeah. these names but I can't remember my wife's. Uh <laughs> Curly Bradley uh and uh uh but um we used to go to these matinees, and they would have a cereal. And if it was, if it was, it was, it was what I call slow binging. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's slow binging. You would every yeah, week they would have a new one, and you would go back to see how the guy uh, got out of that predicament in the previous episode. Oh but, yeah, that's how they get you. They go every week, man. There's always got to be some like big trouble going but, on at but, the but, end of the but, episode. The end of the cereal. Yeah. Yeah, but Gotta here's come back the, next week. Well, how will Tom Mix not fall off the cliff? Come back next week and spend more money. Exactly. So uh, nobody falls off the cliff. How is he going to survive the fall? Yeah. And then the cheat was the next week you went, and they showed you the final scene leading up to the ending. Oh you know, yeah, sure. Right? I say what you just saw. It. Right, and then they would show you a shot you didn't see before. Uh, that was the <laughs> excuse for how he got out of it. Yeah, you know, he fell off the cliff, but landed on a pillow farm and bounced to safety. Yes, exactly. You know, but uh, <laughs> they show the pillow farm before he falls. You know, and oh. and, and that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't in it the week before. So I always yeah, thought, wait a I, minute, <laughs> I always felt every week I was suckered and cheated. You know, <laughs> you were swindled, baby. Yeah. Welcome to real life. Yeah, I was suckered and cheated by these uh, these. Uh, uh, Cereals. So I mean, uh, the ones. But we had the ones I remember. They had this. I I grew up in the era of the um, Columbia cereal. Okay. Uh Prior to that, Universal had been very big in the field because they had Flash Gordon and so on. But by then, uh, Flash Gordon uh, was not even a cereal in the theaters when I was going to. It was like Superman. There was Batman. With a guy wearing a suit that had wrinkles in it. I mean, it it was it was like a <laughs> yeah. It was, Kirk Allen. He was like the first Superman. I think. He he was the first Superman. Kirk Allen. Yeah, yes, in the 40s. absolutely. Yeah, and then they did a, the Batman, which was just it was the outfit. Oh, he was I, wearing. I remember those with that mask with the rubber ears that kept falling. Yeah, over but also everything. he was wearing like the leotard was made out of felt or something like yeah. that. <laughs> no, they. They spared no expense for those well, costumes. They had no miracle fabrics at that time. Okay, mm-hmm. they didn't have yeah. lycra and things like that. You know, 
Uh, yeah, they did the best they could. Yeah, and and so they would always have a cereal, and and uh, you got suckered by the cereal because that's what kept you coming back week after week after week <laughs> after week <laughs> yep. after week. And, and then they would always, and then there was a there was a cartoon. Now, yep. when the cartoon did you, you went to the Saturday matinees? So. When the yeah, co- yeah, it was, uh, the cereals were gone yeah. by the time I went. They showed like a two or three monster movies or whatever, and uh, he went home happy, full of popcorn. Okay, so so now it's cartoon time, and you could always tell by the first three seconds what the cartoon was going to be because it was either the Looney Tunes opening or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. What, what, what cartoon opening uh, did you absolutely decide you were going to go out to the lobby? <laughs> she didn't want uh, let's see. Uh, I love the Warner Brothers cartoons. Right. If it was a Harvey cartoon. That's it. Harvey comics. Once Bing. Harvey bingo, cartoon, like, bingo. Bingo. Casper the Casper friendly the ghost. fucking oh, ghost. I hated, that dead, I hated that dead five-year-old kid. I wanted to kill him, but he was already dead. Yeah. I mean... What a terrible bunch of cartoons. Heckle and Jekyll. Oh, those were pussy cartoons. Yeah, those were just lightweight cartoons. Uh, I hated them. What were There were a few <laughs> I others. Them, but I hated them. Few others. And they, they were just, they were, and whenever they came on, I went to the lobby and bought some more yep. candy or something, you know. Yeah, I, time for milk duds. Yeah, uh, the, more, the, the, the milk duds surplus money. Oh, you remember Sugar Daddies? I love sugar daddies, sure, man. I rotted, I rotted many a teeth, many a tooth to those sugar daddies. Yeah, and uh, let me see here. What was, what were the other ones? Well, of course, you know what sugar I Sugar daddies always... would rot your teeth, and milk does would pull them out because of all the caramel in them. Well, what my favorite, uh, my favorite candy, and to this day it's my favorite candy because to this day they still make it. Uh huh. Jujubees. Jujubees. Oh yeah, jujubees. They, they, that's like the rubbery stuff or something. The, right? Those are the little pill like. Candies, yeah, and yeah, I, I love those. I still like love them to this day. I love the texture. I love the way I can. Play. Ah. I put two of them in my mouth at the same time, and then make them like stick to my eye teeth and my bottom tooth, and bring them together <laughs> and squish them. And oh, I loved Jujubees. And oh, I and I, I would was a junkie I, and still am for malted milk balls. Oh, yeah. I could dive in a bathtub filled with whoppers and never come to the top. Really? Yeah. Oh, I uh, oh, Juju, yeah. Juju bees were always my well. favorite, and they're my favorite to this day. In fact, I used to go down to this candy store down in the uh, down in uh, down near Houston Street that sold them in bulk, and then I would bring yeah. them back home and just eat a whole pound of Juju bees. <laughs> <laughs> over a period of time, and that's that's why I went on a diet. Now that I'm on a diet, I can't have the juju bees. But I'm figuring uh, like I, I've, I've got to go to a uh, my urologist, and if he says I've got cancer and I'm going to die, okay, which I doubt is going to happen. But if he says I'm going to die, the last thing I'm going to do is buy a pound of juju bees. There you go. Yeah, go yeah, out. No. Smile I mean, it's, forget forget saying, hey, do I look fat to you? Because I'm going to get a lot thinner. Yeah. You know, so yeah, <laughs> yep. So then I'm hitting, I'm hitting the juju bees. I may even try heroin. You know, uh, <laughs> lots of it, and lots of it. What the hell? Why not? <laughs> you know, uh, oh, what could hey, that stuff could possibly go wrong. That's going to kill you. Well, it's a race between that and the cancer. Okay. Oh and, yeah, I'd rather take a quick, uh, quick ride out with a. With a whole, with a monkey on my back, then then linger. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so uh, getting back to the uh, the theaters, um, uh, I, uh, I I just uh, you know I went to the every sa- every Saturday I went to the movies, uh-huh. and you know what I uh-huh. did? I'll tell you, I uh, I lived about a mile and a half, I think, from the movie theater up a hill on in San uh-huh. Anselmo, California. Would walk oh, okay. down, walk down to the Tamil Pious Theater, which isn't really there anymore. I think the front still is, but it's now a furniture store. And wow, yeah. I would walk down to the Tamil Pious Theater, and I thought about it the other day. And what parent today would let his kid walk a mile and a half to a movie theater and go to it by himself? Oh yeah, definitely. You, you know, especially I mean, like I was eight years old, nine years old. Parents did that all the time. You know, sure, the, the sure. kids just yeah. went out and they went to the movie theater and then they came home. You know, I did that and I locked my bike up outside and the bike would still be there when I got out and I yeah. go home. But parents, I don't think today wouldn't they wouldn't they like take the kids to the theater and pick them up or go to the theater with them? 
yeah, unless they couldn't stand the kid, then they just okay, we'll pick you up tomorrow. <laughs> Do all the movies. <laughs> He's a bad kid. That's why we left him at the movie. Uh, no journey would convict us. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. So, anyway, you. so uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, um, uh, I, you know, I, I got a great story though. Got a great story to tell you. Okay. About the Tamil Pious Theater. My parents decide they want to go to a movie, and my we also had this dog. And his name was Kipper, K-I-P-P-U-R. We named him after Yom Kipper because he, that's what we, <laughs> we got him on, Kipper Yom Adonis, Kipper. Exactly. And, and people always, uh, Orthodox Jews found that upsetting, that we named our dog after the holiest Jewish holiday. <laughs> Those Jews have no sense of humor. I've been saying that for years. But anyway, uh, Kipper was the stupidest dog you could ever <laughs> meet. I mean, this was not a brain trust of a dog, Okay. <laughs> But he had certain wonderful qualities, like he was loyal and loving, okay? And we, sure. lo- and we loved Kipper. Well, now, my parents one day d- decided they're going to walk to the movie theater rather than drive to the movie theater. Uh, so they start walking, and they look in back of them, and here's Kipper following them. And they go, Kipper, go home! So Kipper turns Ugh. around and he starts going home and they're walking a little further and they're looking back at them and there's Kipper again. He's still following <laughs> them. Uh, and every time they turn around, they yell to him, go home, and the dog turns around and acts like he's going home and then when they turn around and look back, there's the dog. <laughs> so they get to the movie theater and there's the dog right behind them. <laughs> so they go, well, Kipper, we're going into the movie theater. And in those days, dogs, by the way, knew how to get home. You yeah. know, it wasn't like today you don't even let your dog out of the house or if oh, you no, take yeah. him out, oh, let him out of the house, he's on a leash and all of that. In those days, uh-huh. the dogs ran wild and then they came home for dinner when they were hungry. Yeah. Um, so they said, we're going in the theater, Kipper. Stay. Okay. So we go, they go in the movie theater and it's a double feature. Okay. It's like. <laughs> In those days, you know, it could be a double. I remember the worst double feature I ever went to were like was like Ben Hur and something else, and they were both like four hour movies. Oh, <laughs> they were, yeah, they were, eight hours. They oh, were on God. a double bill, you know. Oh uh, God, I, my uh, ass hurts from sitting so much. <laughs> oh, by the way, here's a term you never hear anymore in a movie theater. Is this where we came in? <laughs> Sorry, this where because came you in. would walk in at any time into a movie and it would be in the middle of the film and you'd watch it and then you'd watch the next yeah. film and then you come back to the film you were watching and then you would get to the part where you came in and you yeah. look you yeah. look at the person next to you and go, This is where is this where we came in? Yeah, well let's go. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so my my father in, says yeah. to my mother, This is where we came in, let's go and they get up and they walk out and there's Kipper. He's still there. Uh-huh. And they start walking home. But the dog isn't walking too well. He's like staggering. Uh. And finally they go, what happened to Kipper while we were in the movie theater? You know, They finally get home and the dog is like, he's behind them, but he's really dragon tail. Uh-huh. They get home, they go to sleep. The, they wake up the next morning, the dog is still asleep. That's how tired he was. Uh-huh. Okay. My mother can't figure out what the fuck happened. So she gets a call from this this woman she knows, and they say, "Oh, guess what? We were going by the Tampines Theater yesterday, and uh, we saw Kipper. And what we did is we got him in the car and we took him home for you." <laughs> and my mother went, "Oh, that? Why? What? You know, because Kipper was outside the theater." Uh-huh. She gets another call from another person. Hey. Guess what happened last night? We were passing by the Tamil Pies Theater and we saw Kipper and we put him in the car and we took him home. She got three of these calls. Apparently, three people had taken this dog, taken him home, and then he turned around and went back to the movie theater. That's too far. It's like an I Love Lucy episode right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could make that into a movie for crying out loud. Yeah, he wasn't so smart, but he was loyal as hell. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what a great dog. Poor tired Kipper. Yeah, good old (laughs) Kipper. What a great dog. 
he uh, well, he, eventually, uh, he eventually died, as do all dogs that you have. Yes, you they know. all break your heart at the end. So Not, the end I mean, I don't get an animal anymore because uh, you know, who knows? Yeah, I came into three cats, so I'm gonna. I, hopefully, they will live me. So, which is very possible. Well, no, That's here, what we'll here hopefully they don't. Hopefully, you will live to be a hundred years old, and they will all be long oh. dead. You know. Oh, I don't want to be the last one. <laughs> but I, I don't want to get a cat and have him Who look at me. Who goes to your funeral when you're the last one? I don't, want, <laughs> dead already. I don't want to get a kitten and then have him sitting here looking at me going, you know, I'm going to be here long after you're gone. You know. Oh, I'd be fine with that. And then, you know, when I'm dead, they can eat me. So they can just <laughs> stay around for a while. Well, Everybody who's the victim. <laughs> cats have been known to do that. You know. Yep. And I'm fine with it. If I'm dead, do it every... Stick, stick an M80 up my ass. Stop yeah. me with newspapers. I don't care. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and movie theaters in those days were completely different in the way they operated and everything else. To begin with, you had a box office outside the theater. Remember that box office? It was literally, it was a box is why they called yeah, it a box course, like a, office. They turned them into photo mats later on. But. Yeah. And uh, it was just, it was just a, another time uh, for movie exhibition. And so on. It yep. was just a sure. whole a whole different thing. And then I remember, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when television came in, movies had to compete. And so what they competed yep. with was they came out with new screen formats, and they came uh-huh. out with like three D to begin with, which you couldn't do uh-huh. at home. And they came out with CinemaScope, and that was the first uh, big wide screen format. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember every theater converting to them and how they converted to them. Some of them, some of them didn't have the ability because they didn't have a, a proscenium. That's the width of a stage, folks, uh-huh. to put in a wide screen. So they had to take that same area and kind of letterbox it, you know. Uh-huh. But yep. uh, that was, you know, that was that was a day when movie theaters were completely different than they are now. Now they're just, if yep. you, you got to get there on time when the picture starts, you know. Yeah, sure. By the way. I, I'm, God, I can't remember the last time I've been to the movie theater. <laughs> really? I just wait six months, everything's on HBO. Well, so I, if there's I, anything I want to see, which is hardly anything. So. Well, do you remember the great revolution that Alfred Hitchcock created? Uh, we were watching the film the other night, Psycho. In which he had the the, uh, the the thing. No one will be admitted to this theater after the film starts. Oh yeah, after the shower scene or whatever. No, after the film starts, you have to see it after from the, the very. You it. must see it from the beginning, and that was the uh, first time a motion picture ever said, "Hey, you got to watch this from the beginning." And then they started making films that you had to watch from the beginning, and eventually, uh-huh. it, it you know nobody thinks about getting to a movie theater to an hour late, you know, and then we'll just sit there and wait till the thing comes around again. Yeah, sure. Just get there when I get there. And we'll, yeah, it'll, and by the way, if, if you go to that movie theater and you sit there and then the movie's over and you want to stay there and watch it again, forget it. Yep. You're asked to leave. You know. Yeah. Big, big teamsters with billy clubs come up there. You don't want to stay, do you? No, I don't want to stay. Yeah. You don't want your eyes to watch movies, not be able to watch movies again, do you? <laughs> you don't want your knees to bend the other way, do you? No, I don't want that. I don't feel it. We're going to break your eyes. <laughs> break your eyes. <laughs> I'm going to take your fucking Adam's apple out and play handball with it. Then I'm going to rip out your pancreas and sponge my car with it. Then I'm going to take your lower intestine out and I'm play jump rope with it. You get the picture? Yeah, okay, I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. No, no, you know. We don't have all the wonderful. You know, we actually, when we were growing up, uh, we had a lot of wonderful memories. You know, Uh, and life was simpler then. Much simpler then. And uh, I kind of wish wish I had a more memory of the fifties. I was born at the end of fifty five, and I kind of have slight memories of the late fifty five. I remember the early sixties growing up, and the the parents could let their kids ride around as bicycle. You wanted to find your friends, you just rode around until you found them. And it was a simpler time, and you didn't have to worry about derelicts and kidnappers and all that shit. Well, I mean, do you remember when the worst thing you worried about at school wasn't a, wasn't a, uh, a guy with a, coming in with a gun and shooting up the school? It was the, yeah, I never it, thought of it that. was the class bully. You know, yeah, yep. That was your biggest fear about going to school. Oh, I'm gonna the bully's yep. gonna beat me up today, or he's gonna challenge yeah. me to a fight, or you know, whatever. <laughs> that was that was maybe. Uh, 
uh, the worst thing ever. And they never made a big deal out of bullying. Today they make a big deal out of bullying. Hell. Oh, yes. Bullying yeah, gave me... Back then, it'd be a little bit shoving around, and that was pretty much it. You didn't get shot or, you know, unless you were in an inner-city school, you didn't get stabbed or anything. So, I, I but, maintain, uh, and we're running out of time here, but I maintain you would have never been a comic if it weren't for bullies. Yeah, I, yeah, Joe Russo for me, and he died on my birthday, and I'm glad. Fuck yeah, you, Joe yeah, Russo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but what you did is you became funny as a way of warding off people who would want to beat you up. It probably had something to do with it. But yep. there's, yeah, that one guy I didn't like, but uh, <laughs> he died a hor- later on a horrible death, and he died on my birthday, and I was very happy to hear that. Ladies, Thank you, God. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful person, comedian, the funny guy. Thank you. Funny guy, funny man, Stephen Pearl. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alex. It's always a pleasure to be on your show, and we'll do it again. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Anyway, how are you? Welcome back to our program. Hey, listen, uh, that was I love talking to Stephen because Stephen's funny and I get to reminisce about a lot of stuff. Okay? Anyway, let me uh, let me open up the Skype lines here. Excuse me, I'm picking my nose. Actually, it's not. I don't pick my nose. It's not. It's not a pick uh, from the Seinfeld shows. No pick. No pick. My nose itches, and so I scratch it a lot. So it, it itches more than I than I ever imagined it would. Let me see here. We're opening up the Skype lines. Uh, there, it's now active. A lot of you probably at this moment should be seeing. Okay, my, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, my red green light go on, okay? God, I'm, my nose is itching, something terrible tonight, and I don't know what to, what do you do about nose itching? Well, there, there were hairs in here, and then I try pulling the hairs out, but then that makes my, uh, my eyes tear, and it's, it's not fun, folks. It's not fun. Okay, I'm all set to go here. Now I just got to wait for people to start calling me. And we can, oh, here comes Phil Meyer, uh, the first one up in our citizens panel. And uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, Let me just uh, go to, uh, let's see, the three shot. There we go. Well, you uh, pick it for a little while, and then you pull the hair out enough to where you can reach it with a pair of scissors and then you cut the errant nose hairs yeah and they won't itch if they've been cut off and killed did you ever get one of those thing. nose thingies that you buy and it's all they're electric oh wait a minute. oh Hold yeah on a yeah and they to... sweep around and uh yeah they do they do their little sweep around thing yeah 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 uh i have every invention uh, known to man for the nose hair and uh the scissors are uh, with blunt end. Yeah, but, the, the but they don't work that well. Those little nose thingy. Uh, thingy oh, the electric things. ones. Yeah. No, they don't. Yeah. And the battery dies when you need them. Yeah, but I mean, it it, it goes in there and goes me me me, and then you still have hairs. Yeah, you no, know? no, no, that's not. The I deal. want something that goes in there and just you know. Yanks it out. Yeah. Probably Josh doesn't have this problem because really you start growing hair. Where you least expect it, okay? Yeah. Uh, you you don't grow it any. I'm I'm losing hair under my arms, getting very thin, okay. But, but, my nose, hey, it's it's yeah. it's, it's it's doing its thing. Let's yeah. See here. You know, the time you grab one of those hairs and you pull on it until it hurts, and then zip with the scissors. I'm trying to get it's Jeff all- Stein here, but I click on the thing and he doesn't uh, there we go. I think I think we got him. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Jeff I, doesn't I, have I, nose hair. He, to, that's his mustache. I had to click a, a couple <laughs> of times here to get uh, Jeff on for some reason. I don't know why. Thank you. Huh? Yeah. So you said hello. Thank yeah, you. yeah, so I had to I had to flick it a couple of times uh, to get you on. I don't know why, but here we are anyway. It's working. One yes. of the guys I shoot with has a handlebar mustache, and he actually goes to a convention of other people with handlebar mustaches. Yeah, well, that's a great hobby. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, what do you do for a hobby? I, I grow a mustache. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, they, 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 they sport some pretty interesting ones. Well, you know, the thing is, I tried a couple, of, about a half a year ago, I tried to grow a beard. I think you may yeah. remember. And it just wouldn't, it didn't come out right. Now, look at Jeff. Look at Jeff. That's a beautiful beard. You know? I just trimmed it the other day. Yeah. But yeah. what I'm and saying is... Makes, I like that. Yeah, but I mean, your beard is full, and it's rich, and it's nice. And I tried it, and it just it's got a little blank mark here, and uh, something else there. And it's just... I, I can't. I can't do anything else but this. Two day stubble. That's that's what I got. Oh, I get stubble here, and you don't even notice it. You Sometimes know. I go three or four days, and uh, you know, then I get embarrassed. And you know, okay. women who might be listening don't understand what we guys go through <laughs> with, with shaving. The, the shaving is maybe the most horrible thing that we have to do. Women can play, you know, can claim that they're European or something when they got the hair under the pits and they haven't shaved their legs. Brazilian, Brazilian. One way or the French, you know. What, 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 what is, Jeff? I remember as a teenager. Yeah. Shaving in high school. Yeah. And it was blood. It was, oh, really? oh, well, in those days, though, you didn't have the razor technology That's that we right. had. You had today. a one blade. One blade, two thing. sides. Right. The Gillette, and you you screwed the thing, and it opened up like a fan, uh, uh, and, you, and you set the blade in. And yeah. those blades were, they'd cut you. Those were brutal. Yeah. They were brutal. Then they invented the Bic razor, which had two blades, and it was, you know, a disposable. But the thing was that you can't go... When they went through the three blade, you can't go back to the two blade and and shave. Yeah, uh, and now they got five blades. Well, wait a minute. I wouldn't be able to go back to the four. I blade, remember so. Saturday Night Live years ago doing a parody when Gillette came out with their first two blade razor. Yeah, and they said the first razor. They said, "Well, this is the new Gillette. The first razor, the first blade lifts cuts away. The... Lifts away." And then they got up to three, and we were laughing our heads off, you know. Yeah. And then I think maybe they got up to four. But no, all of a sudden, one day, we've got five. They got five. They got them that vibrate, and they got them that are heated. Um, Not I heated. Once, no, vib they vibrate. I didn't no, get no they, vi they got a heated one now from Gillette. Really? I didn't yeah, see Yeah, you stick it on a stand, yeah. and uh, and it heats. Uh, it you know they're stupid at this point. Well, but, even, you know, well, hey, why did why I don't I don't mind the one that vibrates. It seems to actually cut better. Yeah. Okay. But why heat? What does that? Do? Uh, I guess the heated one. Uh, you know how you get a hot towel shave. I used to have a, a machine that I bought from Sharper Image. You mm -hmm. stuck the can of uh, of shaving cream oh, in right, there, right? And and it heated it up, and you press the button, and out came the foam. It yeah. was like Barbasol. Well, or uh, I what I do is when I I, I shave in the shower. So when so I, do I when I say shave in the shower, first of I all, stand there I, I soften the beard by yeah. running it under hot water. Yeah, you know that's like that softens it up, and then you, uh, yeah, that's what I do. And then uh, then I uh, I don't use a mirror either. Then I put on the the you know the foamy stuff, and then I yeah. shave it, and then right. instead of putting on an aftershave, which I hate. Because they haven't right. made a good smelling aftershave oh, ever. Use a bomb that uh, no, softens. No, no. I just put my face under the shower, a hot shower, and it takes yeah. the sting right out. Now, does anybody like I? I use a, sh a brush. Well, it's by the a, way, by the way, horse uh, hair. Huh? I have a, a shaving brush like the barber uses. Yeah. I use it in the shower. Yeah. Uh, I put the the barbasol, whatever it is, on the uh, yeah. on the brush, and then I you know. Oh, really? Uh, you know. But it looks like Josh never shaves because he's not even joining in on this conversation. <laughs> I try not to. Uh, Use an electric razor? Guys, just, if women, if you're listening, we hate shaving. Now you go, well, we have to shave our legs. Oh, give me a break. There, were, there was a time when I used to wear suits and stuff like that. Not only would I shave, I'd finish it off with an electric razor outside of the shower. Really? So, you know, yeah. So I have the smoothest. 
uh, clean and because slow. Because I always found that an electric razor didn't shave you as well as a blade. No, it doesn't. I'd use the blade first in the shower. Yeah. Then afterwards, I'd shave with the electric razor at, but what, as, what, a second time but in what, the morning. What could it get that the elect that the uh, that the uh, well, you ever uh, miss? You're razor. in the shower. I have no mirror. You ever miss the little spot here or under here? Yeah. And you know, so when I get out of the shower, I trim that all up. Well, my yeah. No, nah, this trim gives that you off. No. a better. No, you know, it's a two fine. stage. Do I look terrible to you? Look. Well, yeah. <laughs> and and your breath stinks. And my breath, my breath stinks. <laughs> Thank you. I You're needed, welcome. I needed that. <laughs> you know, I needed that. Um, uh, anyway, so uh, where is everybody tonight? Come on, folks. It's time to call the fine program here and talk to the fine people I've got lined up here to talk back at you. Or is it the fact that Phil's here? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I could fix that. A whole you bunch know. of people, and then Phil, you said you were you were not showing. You, you weren't going to be here tonight. No, he didn't say that. No, no, next week. Next week. Oh, next week. He's promised yeah. us three days yeah. without Phil. Yeah, I'm leaving Tuesday, uh, the fifth, and I'm coming home on the seventh. By the way, a couple of things that te oh, technologically that my life is now better. Uh. I went and, you know, I have to post these shows. I keep always have talked about the, my misery in life is having to post these shows every day because I have to post four shows and make XML files out of each of them and so on. And I had a program that did it, but I had to cut and paste and cut and paste and cut and paste and then go to the next one and cut and paste and cut and paste. Uh, and then I post the shows, and they make up what's called an XML file, and that's what you see resolved as uh, the on-demand stuff, or iTunes, or what goes up on Spotify. And one file will make it go to all of those, okay? So I, for the longest time, have been looking for a better way to do this. And there's been this program that's been lingering on my machine for a year uh, called Feeder. And uh, I tried it the other day, and I started setting it up. I can now post these shows, folks. Probably even with the cut, even with the changing of all the making up the new XML file thing, uh, I could probably do the whole process in ten minutes. And it's just changed my life. Okay. Well, it's unfortunate you're not going to have that to complain about anymore. What do you mean? Oh, posting shows. Posting shows. Well, I mean, <laughs> I still hate doing it, but I all I have to do is click, 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 and then each each different page needs four changes of just the dates, and that's it. Everything mm. else is duplicated that I had before, and uh, uh, it's just it's wonderful. It's just to completely change my life, you know, to where I don't I don't really care anymore. I'm just that that part of of my job here is easy. Okay. And it sat on your machine for a year before you decided to... Well, because I couldn't figure out how it worked. I uh -huh. couldn't figure out how to set it up. And so one day over the weekend, I decided that I was going to give it a real go. And I did the whole thing, and I got it working and up and running, and I liked it so much. It was a trial period of 15 days or something. And I... Uh, um, I for forty nine ninety nine I bought the uh, program because it's that mm. good. It's just it's just liberated me. Okay, mm. so I just wish there were a program like it for 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 uh, nose hair. No, for the for, the, for Windows because uh, uh, then I would let my other people post their own shows. Although I would not have Jack do it because that would take a learning curve of about five years. So you know. Um, now, there's one other thing I got. Watch this. You're going to like this. You're going to be able to see the difference, I think, when I do it. Uh, Echo, turn off studio light. Okay. See? Oh, you nice. got the bulb. No, I didn't. Echo, turn on studio light. Okay. Yeah. See? Uh, can you put the on-air sign uh, no, I in, I in the same thing? I was going to do that. 
okay, yeah. to be very honest with you. I was absolutely going to do that. But when I tried it, uh, it is a, um, what can I call it? It's a, it's a thing you put in the, in the plug. Oh, it's okay. like clap on, clap off? No, no, you put it in the club, uh, in, the, plug. In, in the plug, and then you yeah. turn it on, and then you, you, you uh, pair it to the Wi-Fi. Yeah. And then it, it becomes a switch to turn it on and off. It's on, nice. the, it's on the line. It's not, and so up here, I don't have, <clears throat> it has three prongs, and they, it had, my, the cord I have is two prongs, and the, I can't no, get it. Oh, cord. no adapter? I, I, I don't want to have to go through all of that. You know, yeah. that's too much. So I've got it, I've got it in the, and, and by the way, from anywhere in the house, I could turn this light on and off, you know. Because you've got six watching. echoes. No. Well, yeah, because I have one in almost every room. And I also, so I put one of these things, two of these things in the guest room, one for the lamp in the guest room and one for the uh, torch uh, light that I have. Yeah, torch here. Oh, that's very cute, Phil. <laughs> and then uh, I put one in the bedroom for that one. Uh, and uh, I could turn it on right now and wake her up, you know, but I'm not going to do that. But uh, 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 Let's see here. Echo, turn off studio light. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that cute? How do you like my mood lighting? Um, okay. Shine Echo, a light under your chin. Turn on Straight studio up. light. <laughs> you know, it's Halloween tomorrow. Hmm? Yeah, it's I Halloween know. tomorrow. I know. I know. So, I, well, I, what are you going to dress up as? Talk show host? Talk show host, yeah. <laughs> same, same thing I do every year. Well, we go out and we buy. Marjorie, once again this year, went out and bought some candy. And uh, uh, every year, not a single kid shows up at our door. <laughs> to begin with, we're in an apartment building. And we're on the eighth floor. <laughs> and the kids are don't tired. don't use the elevator? The kids are tired of trick-or-treating by the time they get to the seventh floor. Right, they, no, they, heard, they heard the Schwarzmans don't give out good candy. No, we <laughs> no, they just have never tried to find out. So now she went out, she bought more, and I said, "Why'd you buy so much candy?" She's supposed to rain tomorrow, and so probably all the kids from the apartment house are going to be doing it in the apartment house. I'll still bet you that we don't get one kid coming to our door, and yeah, I'm stuck with a bunch candy. of candy I can't eat. Yeah, but if you don't have the candy, the they'll you know paper towel you, they'll egg you, uh, you know. Will they really? I, Will yeah, I they really? I live in an apartment <laughs> house. I'm standing there at the door. I can look out. Well, then they put a piece of tape over the peephole and then they egg you. Oh, I see. Okay, well that's smart, Phil. You obviously were one of those little brats who were yeah, punked everybody. You know, I, grew, on, I grew up in New York, you know. <laughs> You know who punks everybody on on uh, on Halloween. Uh, Halloween, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, you were talking to uh, Stephen Pearl about uh, you know times when you could you know go out as a kid and you know ride your bicycle. Uh, you know, I remember when they first started talking about don't take apples from people on Halloween because yeah. they're putting needles and razor blades in them. And uh, that, that I don't remember that was maybe in the early '60s. Uh, prior to that, you didn't have to worry about app uh, well, apples. Well, the thing but. was that when I was growing up, you know, my parents would send, let me, uh, you're going to go to the uh, Saturday matinee, see you later. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I'd walk to the theater. It was like about a mile and a half. And they didn't worry about me. They, people didn't worry about their kids. Right. You know, uh, today, uh, I don't think there's, a, am I right, Jeff? There isn't a parent that would, would, would do that, would let their kid just, you know, it's a, uh, it's a I, total different world. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I heard somebody talking about kids covered in pur Purell and, uh, you know, ah. taking from event to event. <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, Purell. <laughs> Purell. That's what you want. You know, they clean their hands with so they don't get any bacteria. They don't get disease. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, let me see here. We've been, uh, we've been joined here by Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Alex. Happy Halloween. Yeah. You betcha. Well, it's, it's Halloween tomorrow night, so I won't say it in advance. Uh, are you going to dress up? Are, are you going to dress up like Santa? No. 
Oh, so how do you answer the door to give you the kids? You probably get arrested for that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> how, how do you when, on trick or treat? Are you out with kids or By do the you way, stay at home and too. hand out candy? Well, tomorrow is football night, so I will be sitting at home Person. avoiding kids. Uh, you turn off the lights and hope they don't TP you. <laughs> Yeah. No, my daughter goes over to a friend's house and my wife gets stuck answering the door. Yeah. Uh, well, as long as we got two California people he here right now, how's the fires going for you? I got marshmallows. Roast and weenies. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're uh, uh, mostly the ones up in Sonoma and uh, L.A. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the L.A. one is threatening the uh, Reagan Library. Yeah. And... Uh, and they, they said that the Getty Museum is fireproof, or they, really? they get, yeah, yeah, they they pretty much knocked that one out, I think, or yeah. at least kept it away from the. Uh, no, they the said museum. that the building or something was was fireproof. Right? Yeah, they got all kinds of uh, sprinklers and stuff inside and out. Yeah, because it sits on a hill there. Oh, okay, because they took a shot tonight outside of the window of the Getty Museum. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, the whole place was on fire. Yeah, but, but the Getty Museum. Oh, I was thinking of the was... Reagan Museum. I'm not. I don't know about the Getty one. Oh, the yeah. Reagan. Yeah. Uh, the Reagan uh, Library. They were they were they were bemoaning the fact that uh, you know at the Reagan Library they've got uh, Air Force One, and I'm thinking yeah. to myself, what the fuck is an airplane doing in a library? <laughs> Good place to put books. You know, when it's I was book, it's the book return. When I was at, you know, when I went to the library or library, as some people used to call it, the library. Hey, I I didn't exp if there was an airplane in the li library, I would go. I'm getting the fuck out of here. There's been an accident. You know, I mean, um, and if the Reagan Library burnt down tomorrow, do you think I'd care? Nope. <laughs> You know, the, uh, they even have his Oval Office. They take the Oval Office, and they, I, I guess they get a new one for, for each president, but they have... Oh, the uh, same Reagan's. Oval Office stays there, Phil. They just change the furniture and the drapes, you idiot. Well, that's what I'm talking about. You know, they, they... Although with Trump, they'll probably pull it all out because they'll have to disinfect the whole thing and shit. You, you think yeah. Melania's drapes match the and, carpet? And they'll have to take off all the gold gill that he puts <laughs> yeah. on everything. I doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, although you know what I, you know what I want you know what I want if I can get a souvenir from the Trump administration, I want the um, what do you call it? the thing that takes he has all these uh, K cups. Do you ever notice that over to the left? Oh yeah. Behind the K cups, him, huh? right in back of them. Yeah, those aren't yeah. K cups. Those are coins. The, the the I think they're called challenge coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he has a collection from uh, many many police departments. I I have a couple of them. Let me. They look like K cups. They look, they look like K cups. It looks like a K cup holder for they do. They look like K cups. Well, we don't, need, we don't need to see a challenge coin, Phil. Got, what is a challenge coin? I don't <laughs> know. It's for retarded <laughs> people who are challenged. You know. challenge <laughs> He's a hustler in the corner with his coins. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one's from the Albany <laughs> Police Department. <laughs> and that's, that's what you're seeing in, in Trump's that's office is uh, police uh, and, and fire uh as military, well as uh, military, military units, mm. challenge coins. Well, what would he be doing that, though? He never served in anything. Well, you collect them. Uh, Probably like a know. little kid's got his stamps back there. Yeah, yeah. Most kids so. collect stamps. Trump collected uh, challenge coins. Well, a lot of people do that. You know. Really? really? I don't. A lot of people who? Yeah, a lot, a lot of people. Of How cops, many people here have challenge coins? Would you raise your hand, please? Uh, I yeah. got one from the CHP. Uh, let me see if no, I don't it. Phil. CHP. Oh. With oh. I can see him with all those top ones. I can see Phil with it, but Trump. But that's like he probably has one from Disneyland too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. You got one for Mickey, yeah. right? Oh boy. Um, CHP one is cool. Uh, see California finest, 2010, and then. Uh, 2018, I mean, and then here's the other side. Yeah. 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 Okay. And that, Congrats. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, well, you know, um, 
It's funny, but you heard about this Kurt Suter? You know who Kurt Suter is? Yeah, from uh, Anarchy. Sons He's married Anarchy. to what's her name, uh, uh, who was married with children. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's her name? It was in that thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Oh, she she was in Married with Children. I know. She was a backup I know. singer. I know. For... I know. I know. What I know. group? I know. I know. I sat on a couch with her once. Uh, uh, what group was she to? Uh, to I don't. Do I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, do what? But it's you're drift. The lady, you're drifting away from my from my story that I'm trying to tell here. Well, you asked me if I knew Kurt Suter so or knew of him. Uh, yeah, but I didn't expect a a thesis. Yeah. All right. Okay. So anyway, and Kurt Suter. <laughs> so Kurt Suter uh, started a new show called The Mayans, right? I watched it. Yeah, mm. and he just Boy. got fired from the show by really? FX. Wow. And you know the reason why? Because the show is boring. Well, and that, it's a rip it, off on Sons of Anarchy. Well, but you can rip yourself off. However, you're allowed to do that. Okay. Yeah, but don't but pass they, it listen, off as they, new material. They, 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 they uh, passed it for another, you know, second season. It's in its second mm -hmm. season now. But they, they fired him. And he mm -hmm. says the reason he was fired is because he wrote a joke in one of the scripts that referred to Disney killing oh. Jews. Oh. Oh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Something about one guy looking at another and says, well, you want to go to, Di let's go to Disneyland. And he says, yeah, but you know, Disney killed all those Jews, you know, and and who owns FX now? Disney. Yeah, and they wow. went ballistic. He took it out of the script. He took it out of the script. It never made yeah. it to air. Uh, the line, uh, you you know, we, we want to go to Disneyland, or this looks like Disneyland, or something was left in it. But he said he cut it out. But that was enough to piss them off. I didn't think Disney liked Jews. That's the joke they wrote into the screenplay. Yeah, but Disney did not like Jews. Disney. Well, that's not exactly true. Walt Disney. He, uh, uh, you know, for instance, he hired he hired a Jew specifically <coughs> to write Song of the South because he felt a Jew would be more sympathetic to the plight of people. Nah, it's because he was throwing the Jews under the bus. No, but anyway, uh, I you know I'd like to think that he was an anti-Semitic and. You know, that he hated Jews. But that's why Souter is out of that show. It's because he made it. And, and, you know, it's because Disney's taken over the world. All right? Almost all of show business they own. Uh, yeah. He's on your wrist. Huh? He's on your wrist. Oh, who's on my wrist? Ask him what time it is. Who's on my wrist? Oh. Oh, he's to make you watch. Oh, Disney. Oh, oh, yeah. It's 10.57. Mickey. I never thought they'd be this big again. Disney. With Disney, wow. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's right. They got the, they bought Marvel Comics. They got Star Wars. I well, mean, you know, you really say you, you're amazed that Disney is this big again. Oddly enough, Disney uh, wasn't that big. Disney was. was big when he when he did Snow White, but he couldn't didn't have another hit after that. You know, yeah, no. for years. For years. And who's who's? I'm getting. I'm getting I'm getting a little, a little, hold on a second. Let me get rid of all of you guys for a second. I was getting a little slap back. I don't know why that all of a sudden happens once, once in a blue moon. But anyway, so uh, that's why Suter's out of there, because he dare say something nasty about Uncle Walt. You know, huh. His wife was on the show a couple times. I can't, uh, Katie. Uh, Katie, Katie Seagal. Seagal. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I like, I like Steven Mary. Seagal's mother. Yeah. So, somehow no. there's a picture of me. She came and did a show with us that we did out of a frat house live for the morning show. And she came and did that show. And we had a couch there. So I interviewed her on the couch. And I took a shot of her on the couch with my hand in my pants like uh, like her husband on Married with Children. Oh, yeah. Do. He used to do that. He used to sit yeah, on the couch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't know where the photograph is now. Probably up in smoke right now if I, if I have a, you know. What are you, a Cheech and Chong? No, well, my my uh, all my my storage, yeah, is, is up in up in smoke. I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, it's in Sonoma. It's it's. Did in... you get a report on the uh, on the complex as to no? Uh, its I haven't condition? gotten a, I haven't gotten a report at all. But the last year, everything around it burnt down. Okay, <laughs> so I figure what's left to burn down. It's kind of got a protective barrier against fire. You know. 
in, in, in b before it got moved, did that old uh, complex, uh, the storage complex, get uh, burned down in the previous fire? No. No. Okay. No, so everything not around the old, it. the old one that that you had for ten years. Oh, or, that's uh, up in that's in Petaluma. I don't know if Petaluma has Petaluma been hit. Uh, I think last yeah. time, last time maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, I think that that one was like in a very... I, I, I don't know what the, the one that uh, Damien runs is like, but that one was like a cinder block, you know, and I don't know if it could have burnt down. Yeah. You know, so. Well, or, they have roofs, you know. It's the roof that uh, catches fire, yeah. not necessarily the walls. Yeah, but I was on like the third floor and there were six floors. You know, so I don't know. Anyway, I'm fine. And then I get mm. a bill today. My rent's gone up. So, you know, I mean. <laughs> you tell me you can't get access? Yeah, I mean, you start out, uh, I'm paying about 20 bucks more a month, maybe 30 bucks more a month. Yeah. But it's still better than where I was. They had me up to, God, I started out at like $150 and it wound up being over 400 yeah. You know, Jeez. that's how they get you. That's how these storage places get you. Is is you know you move your stuff in there and they're betting you're never going to move it out. You know you you claim it's just temporary. Yeah. But then you never move. I'm out. paying two hundred a month now to park my bike my motorcycle. Mm -hmm. I I have a storage room because when I sold the house I had a two car garage. At the apartment there isn't a private parking space that's sort of communal. Yeah. And uh, even though it's underground, uh, I don't want to park the motorcycle there because they'll steal them. Yeah. And so I leave it in a uh, in a storage room. So since 2015, yeah. I've been paying now $200 a month for the motorcycle to sit in there. I could have bought a new motorcycle. Uh, in, you know. <laughs> How often do you use it? Uh, not as often as I used to when it was in my garage. Very rarely. I think I've ridden it maybe twice in a year and a half. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, mm -hmm. the point is, the point is, you know, storage yeah. lockers are a sucker's bet because... I mean, I would invest in them just simply because it takes a great business. People move in, they don't move out. And if they decide they're not going to move out, but they're not going to pay, you sell their stuff and you make some money on that and then rent it out again. You know, yeah. I mean, it's a good deal all the way around. You know, so. So how you been, uh, 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 Mr. Wheeler? You know, it's funny. What show was I watching in which the lead character... It's a show on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it. And I watched the first episode, or a part of the first episode, and the guy's name is Josh Wheeler. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. I haven't watched that, I guess. And I thought, what are the chances of that? And then I came out with my normal answer, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it happened. You know. Very good. I've been well. A few nights off, so I call tonight. Call tomorrow. Yeah, call you're uh, you're uh, you 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 work where again now? You I work for paint the dry. I work for the Evil Empire of Paint, known as the Sherwin Williams Company. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. We cover the world. Yes. Do you know that Sherwin Williams is one of the largest purchasers and sellers of of carpet in the in the nation? Uh, they might be. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think they sell they're, flooring in some of the paint stores, though. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're they actually sell all that kind of stuff. They, I mean, now, I remember that. Yeah, they actually sell. I think you can buy blinds and curtains and all that kind of stuff through them. So they, they have like a home decorating division. Yeah. They, well, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, my favorite thing was uh, Sherwin Williams because of that. We cover the world, and then that bucket of paint going down and. Mm -hmm. falling down on the earth, you know. Yeah. Um, the other favorite of mine was Dutch Boy. Uh, are they around uh, anymore? Uh, well, are they you? actually, yeah, but they're owned by Sherwin Williams. Oh, okay. Are, yeah. are you ready to get one of those vans and start cruising around Dutch Boy and, you know. Uh, yeah, that's what I was, I yeah. called them the Evil <laughs> Empire of Paint because there's they don't really have that many competitors anymore because they bought most of them out. Like, they bought... I mean, they own a lot of people that you don't actually know that they own because they kept the brand name the same, such as Dutch Boy and uh, Minwax, mm -hmm. you know, that's the Stains and all that. I mean, they own all of that. They bought Valspar Corporation, so they own Valspar, Sherwin Williams, plus all of Valspar subsidiaries. 
Uh, I mean, it's they're basically in every. So they're in all the do-it-yourself stores now too. So they're in Lowe's, they're in Home Depot, they're in Ace Hard. I mean, even though it doesn't say their name on the can, they own the product. They don't outsource their their paint to like some other country, do they? Uh, uh and you mean to, to have it manufactured? Yeah, China. No, no, no. It's made right here. Because in I would think they make it all over the world. They make it all over the world, but the but yeah. the paint that they sell here is made in the United States. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we make at my place. Because plant. I yeah. would think that, that would be something that really wouldn't travel all that well. Yeah, it'd, it'd probably be expensive. No, it's made right here in America Yeah. by uh, overpaid, you know, lazy people. Overpaid, lazy people like you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's made right here in America. So. Yeah, well, I mean... And yeah, we, uh, I mean, they have plants that make, they make all their stuff right here in, in the States that is sold here, uh... Like, they have plants that make their own uh, brushes. Like, uh, Sherwin-Williams actually manufactures those high-end uh, Purdy yeah. brushes and rollers. They make that out in Oregon. With their uh, Chinese boar bristle. Uh, yeah. And they make a lot of... Uh, Sherwin-Williams is very big in the powder coating industry. Mm-hmm. So a lot of powder coatings are made here. There's a powder plant uh, what is, what, is, wait, what, what is powder coating? Cocaine. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just like it's like a hardened material used to cover certain things for rust it's, inhibiting it's and put on. And... It's put on elect, uh, electrically. They, they have an electrical charge, and then the powder adheres uh, to the object that's being painted. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, they don't they don't usually apply it. They just make the product, and then manufacturers apply it to their stuff. I mean, but our plant, and then I work I work in a liquid plant, so we make liquid paint. Yeah. And we're an industrial plant, so we do make some house paint, but okay. not well, look, it, all that much. This may be a stupid ass question, but I never thought about this, and I now I have somebody I can ask the question to. How do you make paint? What does it come from? Well, does it come from made... the, Does it come from the paint tree? Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's basically two different kinds, and we make both. We're, we're both a solvent-based plant and a water-based plant. Yeah. No so your more, main ingredient that oil. you start with is usually some sort of solvent mm-hmm. or some sort of water. I mean, and there are different kinds. There's, you know, there's deionized water, which is very, very clean, and then there's just regular. Some of it is made from just regular city water that, that they pump right through the pipes of the city of Columbus, mm-hmm. right into a tank, and then... If you it have lead based paint. Large tank. If, if you go to if you go to Flint, you can make lead based paint. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Just by using the water. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it, it goes into a, a very large tank that's called a an HSD, which stands for high speed disperser. So this is nothing more than a very big tank, usually about three thousand gallons, with a huge blade that looks yeah. like a saw blade. I mean, yeah. these are usually twenty four, thirty inches around. Uh, and they begin to basically spin the water or spin the solvent, and then they dump in ingredients. A lot of pigments that are powder formed. A lot of uh, they do dump in a lot of liquids. Uh, sometimes they pump it up from the bottom for safety purposes, so they pump it into the tank from the bottom so that it mixes in with the liquid instead of dumping it from the top. Uh, it's actually a pretty dangerous dangerous process if you're making solvent-based paint because. Yeah. A lot of your solvents, if you dump one solvent into another, you have to bond it and ground it and all that because it makes static electricity when it falls. And in some cases, the tank is so large it has to fall, you know, like 10 feet. Uh, one of our plants had a flashover a couple years ago. It actually had an explosion, and about half the plant in North Carolina burnt down, and the operator was killed. God damn. So, uh, we, uh, we worked overtime for about a year while they rebuilt the plant and uh, made our paint and their paint because they were like a sister plant. And so now the tanks are inerted with uh, nitrogen. So in other words, they have huge pipes that come into the tank and they pump it full of nitrogen. There's a green light if you can dump, yellow light you need to stop, red light you can't. I mean, it's it's a pretty high tech, pretty high tech process. And a lot of the ingredients that aren't pumped or aren't dumped in bags or dumped from drums or buckets by human beings are pumped in through an overhead piping system that is computer controlled and in other words you program that you need to run a thousand pounds of this raw material and there's a pump that pumps it from a tank farm that could be 
2,000 yards away outside and pumps it all the way in. There's a meter that counts it, puts it in. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's a pretty it's a pretty long process, but basically they put it in a tank and they mix it up, they get it made, and then sometimes with your special paints, they run through what's called a COM, which is like a mill that cleans it up and gives the paint its special properties. Then it gets pumped into what's called a thin-down tank where the paint is actually thinned down and then they add the very finished ingredients. During this entire process, they take samples to the lab and check it for quality along the way. And when it's all done, it sits in a thin down tank, and then they fill it in the can, and they put it on a conveyor, and it goes on a truck, and goes to the store. And that's you the story make this of pain. Joke. By the way, by the way, uh, Phil, I, yeah. uh, somebody said your mic is way loud. I'll push it back. That, and that my well, you could also turn the uh, the thing down a bit because I noticed last night your mic was loud too. And they're saying that I don't sound as loud as you. you know. Well, that's that's because I'm younger. But uh, <laughs> you you were you know that description. This is a joke, Josh. Don't take it personally. It, that was like watching paint dry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Josh, what do you, what do you do there? I have, I currently have a couple jobs. Really, uh, one of the things that I do is I work for the maintenance department. At times, I service equipment, and uh, the other part of my job is basically procurement. I basically order uh, for one for the maintenance department, and two, I order sometimes I order materials for the plant. I don't usually order raw materials because I have a couple raw material buyers, mm-hmm. but I order all the uh, all maintenance parts and things like that. And then other times, I sometimes order for the plant things that they use that are not raw materials. So. Just anything. They're tools, so you're not, you're not, you're not materials, you, you, some packaging, you, stuff like that. I just imagined you there with one of those little uh, little stirs, you know, those little uh, uh, Stir uh, wood stir yeah. sticks uh, in the by the tank going like this. I thought that was yeah. your job. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes they actually do that because we have a uh, we have a small batch division inside mm-hmm. of our plant where I mean, people actually buy small batches of custom made paint. And, I mean, you can get them to make you one five-gallon bucket of a special paint, and small batch goes up to maybe like three or 400, 500 gallons sometimes, I mean, of custom-made, either yeah. custom color or custom property or something like yeah. that. Wow. Yeah, sometimes when they I make was a tiny kid, batches. We used to get paint for our, the bottom of the boat that had copper in it. Now, it's illegal now, or it was, it was almost illegal then. Uh, yeah. But uh, I guess the copper did something with electrolysis, and you uh, you could uh, uh, paint the bottom of the boat, and you wouldn't get yeah. electrolysis. Yeah, but our arena. our facility does not make very much so-called architectural house paint that you would go to the store and buy to paint the wall in your house. We we do make a little, but they have a couple plants that exclusively almost do that all the time. We're an industrial plant mostly, so we make a lot of stuff that. Most of what we make doesn't necessarily go to the store. It goes to a warehouse and then gets shipped to another manufacturing facility who then uses our paint to put on a product that you would buy. So, like, we make we make the paint and the clear coat, for example, for Louisville Slugger to put on bats. Uh, we make a shit ton of green paint for John Deere Corporation. Um, you know, we make a lot of stuff i mean we make paint that goes on like atm machine plastic facades and i mean stuff that gets put in another manufacturing facility and sprayed out of guns and covers materials that you buy at the store like the brown paint on a ups truck you know that's that's exclusive yeah i mean we have a few other plants that make like a plant in kansas that just got off the strike they make a lot of paint like example for boeing uh, to paint planes. Um, at our plant, we make we have a lot of government contracts at our plant. We make a lot of military paint. So we run a lot of the beige and the dark green and the black. And we used to make moisture cure. We're not doing that anymore. Moisture cure paint, which is a very high end expensive paint. Uh, that's let, also let me ask you this. Is Sherwin we Williams. Moisture is, cure is sure, finishes it, on floor. Uh, Phil, right. let, me, let me ask a question. Oh, Here, do you mind? Uh, could Sherwin Williams be could Sherwin Williams be considered a um, a, a monopoly? No. But don't answer. I'm asking him, well, Phil. Well, you got. You got you I'm got asking. More. I'm asking him the question. Yeah. All right. I mean, it's pretty. It's getting pretty close. I mean, the Valspar acquisition took a very long time. 
Be, and the reason that it took a very long time was because they had to go through negotiations with the with the, what the DOJ, the Department of Justice. I mean, it took like they bought Valspar in like 2015, and it just like became done in like late 2017. I mean, it took like two over two years for that process to go through. So, so it's getting close. It's getting close, and at times. They, the last time they bought someone, I think they bought a company called Accurate Dispersions or something like that, maybe about 15 years ago. And they were telling me at that time they were forced to sell off some other stuff because of the particular industry that Accurate served, I think. They were going to be almost the only – so they the, the, the DOJ or whoever made them uh, close down or sell off certain other assets. So they're, they're pretty close. They're – they're currently listed as the second largest paint corporation in the world, only behind, I believe, PPG. And it's only because PPG is so big into so many other things that are non-paint related. Wow. I mean, as far as just pure paint, we're probably the largest. I mean, I know DuPont makes a little bit of stuff like that, too. So it's you basically have three people. I mean, you have PPG and you have SW and you have, you know, DuPont and well, everyone else. Is as long as there are enough players in the field that that doesn't, you know, that keeps them away from being a monopoly. So yeah. they must like you having know, the competition. What about like Kelly Moore and Benjamin Moore, which is Kelly Moore's illegitimate cousin? Uh, you know, uh, are, aren't they pretty big? Yeah, they're pretty big, but they're not PPG or SW big. Yeah. I mean, Sherwin Williams is in like seventy nine countries. I mean, there are people that work for Sherwin Williams. I mean, who wear an SW uniform everywhere. I mean, in the Middle East, they're in China, they're in Japan, they're in Korea. I mean, they're in Brazil. They're in. I mean, they are. Every, yeah. They are. I mean, seventy nine countries. I mean, that's you know. I mean, they're in. They're in almost. Yeah. Every industrialized country. Kelly around. Moore is just Ireland and us. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, well, Benjamin Moore is actually Jewish. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And then, I mean, and they have facilities. I mean, they're in all 50 states, you know, at least at least with stores. And they have mm -hmm. manufacturing or blending facilities. And, I mean, I don't know if it's in all 50 states, but it's got to be pretty damn close. I mean, if you want to yeah. move all over the country... You can. I mean, yeah. I, I could have. I could move if I wanted to take another job and make a little bit more money. We've talked about that, but I mean, it it just depends. I mean, you could go pretty high if you're educated and yeah, you know, you're decently intelligent. You work hard, but 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 SW will work you to death. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I probably shouldn't say too much bad about. It. I mean, if you want them to work you, uh, fucking right into the ground and then drag your body out and fucking bring in someone else that they're more than willing to fucking let you do it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Anyway, uh, they're, they're a good company overall. I mean, I, I don't, I don't really have yeah. any complaints. Well, let me change the subject here. Um, the news came out today that Twitter is not going to accept political ads during the political season. Um, Can they raise their price on the non-political ads now that they don't have to have a uh, uh, the political? Uh, what, what do they call that political buy? Uh, when you buy media, you yeah. know that? the lowest price. That no, that, that, I don't think that goes for Twitter and p people like that. If that's only oh. in broadcasting. Oh. And Facebook employees uh, wrote letters to Zuckerberg and said that he should do the same thing, I think, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. I heard that, yeah. I think yeah. they feel they don't want, what they don't want is the Russians buying a lot of Right, time. right. You know. Zuckerberg said that he didn't care what the ad said as long as they paid for it. Yeah, that's kind of stupid, I think. Well, yeah. Uh, more or less is what he's <laughs> Well, just, that's why it's a paid ad. The trouble yeah. is, the trouble is that, you know, in advertising, at least in broadcasting, uh, the advertiser has to prove their claims. And they can't make claims which aren't true or they're not supposed to. I don't know how assiduously the network's go you know monitor this but you know this is a field in which a lot of lies get spread in advertising especially if you go to the internet and twitter they can do almost anything they want to on twitter you're wrong phil because it doesn't apply to because those, it only applies to old technologies okay you know 
Um, then, then I'm going to advertise on on Facebook. Number one, number one. <laughs> I'm the for the biggest. The, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, um, I wonder how this is going to affect uh, the campaigns. I think they said that the networks could still advertise, but it, it, not in any way that has political adv adv advocacy. Um, they're they're going to come out with a, a, group, a set of rules in the coming days or so on. But they just don't want to take money for political ads. They just feel that there's too much lying going on and that he, it allows the Russians to buy time, you know, buy space and things like that. And they want to keep out of that uh, out of that space. And I think I, I got to hand it to them. I agree, you know. Yeah, if they're setting the rules now, why not? Yeah, um, and I, I don't hear Facebook saying they're going to do the same thing. Uh, but then Facebook are a bunch of creeps, you know. And I say that because we're on Facebook right now, and I'm saying it, Facebook's a bunch of creeps. You're going to go to Facebook jail. I'm going to go to Facebook jail, yeah. Uh, but you, uh, are you ready to uh, move on to another topic? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, you know, I, was just thinking I, I just went on to another topic, Phil. Oh, oh Okay. <laughs> Yes. I was just thinking about what you said with uh, Twitter not taking political things, mm -hmm. uh, ads. Yeah. You know what? Maybe they shouldn't let Trump on Twitter, the president of the United States, because he's I, – I don't, I don't think he should be on there, actually. Well, I question he, that, whether that would – I don't know if that constitutes an ad, I however. Saying, is that counted as an ad? Because he's I don't think them. so. I don't think so. But um, – uh, but he's using it to put his points on there. Yeah, oh, I. Oh, it's not terrible. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, the question is, would it be good if they? I don't know if this includes uh, political people, as an example. In other words, if uh, uh, OAC wants to have a Twitter account and say her stuff about who she thinks should be president. Uh, if you said that Trump can't do it, then OAC can't do it either. I would say everybody. Like, I would like all the political people. I would like to see all the account. political people not be able to use Twitter. Okay? I agree with that. That's what I would say. Just everybody off of it. You want to run your ads on TV? Be Fine, you can do that. But because don't it, because, it, because even there, uh, those individuals can, you know, foist their lives, you know, so foster lives. Their opinion. Hmm? They're considered opinions, I guess. Yeah, and they're like assholes. Well, Everybody's got one. one. Everybody's got one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. You know, I don't. Uh, um, what do you think, Phil? Uh, I think that uh, any uh, uh, curbing of uh, of uh, messages is an invasion of free speech. Uh, I think that. Uh, these, uh, Phil, Facebook what happened? What happened to your idea that these companies are owned by people, and they, they can are. make whatever rules they want to? Yeah, but you know, if you if you write a, a letter to the editor in the New York Times, uh, should it be uh, not uh, posted uh, because you're of one political persuasion or another? There are a lot of letters uh, that don't get uh, don't get published in the New York Times, Phil. That's well, they, they can only fit so many, I guess. But are they are they? Uh, they're not required. They by, they're not, they're they're not required by any law to be even-handed about that. Uh, they pick and oh. choose. Huh? What, what? All right. Well, I, I just uh, you know these are private concerns, although they're so large. Well, you, now, you're the one that before so you're, you're, you said to me once when I brought this up. And you said, well, they're private companies. They can do whatever they want to do. So I'm throwing that answer back in your face. Well, they are. It's just that I'm throwing the point, answer back in your okay, face. Okay, but that was once. And now oh, there are many more users on this thing. And it's actually a form of communication. And it is I a privately, anyone, it, is, it is a, it is a, I think it's, they're publicly owned now. They're mostly. publicly owned. Yes, but, but still, that but, makes but it a person. They're not government, but. Uh, they're you know, owned, the and hand, they, can, they can make their own rules. They're, they're so large that it would be, a, you know, they, they would be controlling free speech. No, they're not controlling free speech. You're saying they don't want you to advertise. Yes, Jeff. Well, also, their quantity has gone down and down every year. So you just said that they're they're so big and they're 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 growing. And they're Facebook not. Facebook has over what two billion users. I was talking about the New York Times. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that that's 
fish well, but in terms of the Twitter issue, I mean, but we're referring to, you know, advertisements. I mean, we're not, you know, they're not shutting off individuals, you know, themselves. Right. They, I mean, they, uh, you know, OAC what, can still, still state her opinion and so on. Yeah. But I mean, my, you know, Trump is still on Twitter and he is he is free to say, you know, vote for me. And, you know, Joe Biden is on Twitter and he's free to say vote for me. What they're talking about is shutting off advertisements paid for by unknown people that say uh, Joe Biden, you know, once raped a nine-year-old and vote for Trump because there's no the proof Ukraine. that Joe Biden ever did such a thing or what. I mean, Ukraine, I think that's it. what they're referring to is just, you know, made up horse manure. And they're not oh. they're saying instead of trying to fact check and censor, we're going to get out of the business completely well, that's their rather choice. than pick and choose like what you're that, saying that, the New York Times would do. That's but, their but get but out this, of this refers so, although the right wing uh, uh, posters on Facebook, for instance, say that their accounts are being uh, filtered and uh, they're limiting the number of people that they can get through to because it's a conservative message and uh, that they're being unfairly uh, filtered. What, yeah. uh, what, what's this you're saying yeah. again? Uh, the, the complaint from conservatives yeah. is that their Facebook, Instagram, and uh, uh, YouTube, as well as... Um, uh, what do you call Twitter, uh, are being filtered by the companies uh, because they are right uh, conservative message and they're not getting out or they're cutting their accounts and And, off. and uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter adamantly deny those charges, and yeah. they're, they're, they're supposedly baseless. Uh, Charlie I mean, Wallace called us. Charlie? Hi. Hi. How do you, have Top you heard what we're talking about? Top two nationals. What? Really? Really? Top of the ninth, four to two nationals. Hmm. Wow. This, it's probably going to be the first World Series ever where the visiting team won every game. Okay. <laughs> I think people are tired of Houston. Yeah, well, I mean, Good. is it? Does this mean that uh, it's going to be over tonight? Yeah. Oh, this yeah. Is game seven. Oh. Okay, it's game seven. Okay, I, I haven't been paying attention at all. Sorry, I didn't mean. To I, I haven't been paying attention in, until they started booing at Trump. Then I started paying attention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, did you hear that Jewel laid off 15% of their workforce today, uh, which was, I think, 50, either 1,500 or 15,000 people? Uh, they, uh, 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 the your CEO, I think, uh, this might not be new news, but their CEO was replaced or, or was fired. That but, was, that uh, was today, weeks ago. They laid off a whole bunch of people, and their stock dropped uh, really big time. Uh, because of the uh, litigation, they they are no longer allowed to sell uh, flavored vape things. I don't I don't know that does now I, I since I don't vape, okay, and, and I have no intention of vaping anytime. Well, except for the pot that I vape. Um, my question is: Does Juul also sell the tobacco products that go in their vaping? I don't know. Or I and if they don't, then that shouldn't affect them. That shouldn't affect their bottom line. What should affect their bottom line is that, you know, a lot of parents are seeing their kids vaping, and that's bothering them, you know. I believe they do. I believe that that whole vape thing is all one package, isn't it? Well, I don't know, I'm but not, is are they uh, are they are they selling the tobacco yeah. product? You know, do they buy it from Reynolds or you know? Uh, oh, uh, I don't know. They they they've got the whole package. I think it's a uh, the whole unit. Well, they have the unit Comes with the stuff in it. They have the unit. Well, yeah, but but my question is, the tobacco product I think has to be made by someone who is registered and to be able to create a tobacco product. Yeah, I don't know if they make it. Uh, they, I, they probably buy the tobacco, I would assume, you know, because they don't. Yeah. I mean, is Jewel simply the delivery system? Is what I'm saying, and that you. Well, when they do their advertisements, there's a disclaimer in the beginning of the advertisement about tobacco product so well i've heard that before on the radio they might be doing that because they are a delivery system for tobacco you know i mean Jeez, Josh, I, I just don't know i know so little about the vaping business all i yeah. know is i think that jewel is being given a bit too bad a time in all of this 
Well, yeah, I got a I got a suggestion for Josh to put in the suggestion box over at the, his company. They should make paint uh, uh, vape uh, cartridges. You know, so you vape the paint. It, it's just another way. You to just came up distribute. with that idea. Got oh, a million, yeah. million dollar idea, Vaping, Phil. Yeah, million dollar idea. Yeah, people, people <laughs> put it in the suggestion box. It's called, called huffing. It's it, yeah, it's called <laughs> huffing, Phil, and you don't need a vape to do it. Okay, yeah. so, uh, but um, uh, I just, you know, I just think that the the uh, the verdict is out on on vaping as to whether it's the vaping that's dangerous, the actual inhalation in that form, or if it is the adulterated products that you are vaping you know i have a feeling it's the uh, some people pull that stuff in so deep and i don't think vaping is meant to be uh inhaled in, in in such a forceful manner and i think that's where they're getting the lung damage uh on some of these people uh, you know there's what 18 of them that are dead what do you mean by for, hundreds forced, more in such a injured. forceful manner it's well, the same as i saw it, people uh it, doing with the marijuana and well, that's the, no like it, it, marijuana is completely different story. We're talking now about vaping tobacco. But no, vaping the marijuana, uh, and they. Uh, I'm talking they about. In, we're not huh? talking about vaping marijuana right now. We're talking about general vaping, in which they are vaping tobacco products. I, all I said was. You they, said marijuana. I've seen people take it in in a very forceful well, manner, because, like no, the because, same way that you do because, with a joint. It, yes, because it's the way you do it with a joint, Phil. You uh, don't smoke I, tobacco that way. I think what way. you're talking about is I think you can turn up the volume and get a stronger hit off it. Because yeah. I know what you're saying. Sometimes I see people sitting in a car, and it comes blasting out of the car. Yeah. And then sometimes you just see someone with a you know, nice light smoke. But sometimes I see a cloud coming out, like it's like blasting Cheech and out. Chong, yeah. Yeah, and, and I go, damn, how the hell do those people take that into their lungs? Yeah. And when you think about vaping, it's a vapor. And if you're inhaling vapor into your lungs, doesn't that, doesn't that cause a pneumonia-type reaction, you know? Well, that's, that has you know, to give you cancer. It's well, who do knows? But I, I don't... I, if it's liquid into your lungs, a vaporization, it can't be. It's, 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 it's almost little, like pneumonia. In I the lungs, know. I'm not a I'll, scientist. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I, I think you, they're going to they're gonna eventually find out that the actual act of vaping wasn't causing the problems. The problems seem to be all the deaths they report are kids who went out and bought marijuana uh, uh, illicitly uh, and Probably. yeah, and that it, these it's, these it's the it, shitty process of what they were inhaling. Yeah. Well, there were additives they also threw in there. Exactly. You know, because they found that with the pot too. The pot had, they were lacing pot, and that's why they came out with all the uh, the uh, restrictions and, and and all the testing that they're doing now because there be was it. pot out there that was being laced that to make it stronger. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I encounter now it has people. to be tested for all kinds of metal. By the way, did you hear about marijuana? Pesticide? About marijuana in California, that there are a lot of people who don't are legally making are legally growing marijuana, and are shipping it out of state. Oh really? Isn't yes, it and it is a bigger business than the legal business. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so then ship it like to New York or whatever. Wow. Before they well, legalized, I'll tell you, if you, tell you what, it, wrap it up probably. They, our you town can't. now, our town smells like pot everywhere. You know, before they legalized okay. marijuana in California, Mendocino, uh, the whole economy was a marijuana-based uh, grower's economy. I was just, I was just down at the school district tonight, and there's like. Ten acres of it growing behind the school ditch. <laughs> yeah, was the principal and superintendent hitting up in the? It's, in the it's, it's, it was, it, but it's a it's, it's a legal it's a legal grow, isn't it? Yeah, it's for him. And, okay. And then there's another one about a mile down the road, and then there's another one about another mile down the road, and those are all legal open grows for hemp, because we just passed hemp grows. But hemp and, is doesn't get you high. That's hemp, the hemp does. Plant. Huh? It's for it's for it's for, it's for uh, rope and paper or fiber. Yeah, you know they're but making they also, flooring out of hemp. Also have indoor grows everywhere yeah. going on now. We yeah. have two dispensaries in town. We only allowed two dispensaries, but we have 
Uh, indoor grows for manufacturing, up to 20,000 square feet per. Mm -hmm. And then we've got manufacturing and we've got testing. We're going to become one of the largest testing areas in California. So all the testing will come through this town here. Wow. And we're going to tax it all. Good. Good. Yeah. So did the wild ones. Yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> But the, te but the, the testing Alex, is the big deal. What, the whole thing that the whole thing that Alex was talking about, it sounds like was probably the feature that was done on sixty minutes yeah, Sunday. Yeah. You know, and the that whole problem is caused by the fact that you can have marijuana in what, like three states or whatever, and you can in the rest. And that problem to me, it seems, would cease to exist if it were just legal in all the other states. I mean Correct. I watched that sixty minutes report too. And I see the sheriff flying around the helicopter, and oh, look at down there, those, those growing marijuana plants. And I think, oh, thank God you were here to save us from those fucking marijuana plants, because God forbid we put those on a truck and drive them over here so some people can fucking smoke that shit. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, thank God for the fucking police. They, they Get still the fuck do out that here, around man. here Don't too. Do you remember? Do you remember camp? Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, police uh, had yeah. a thing called camp. Uh, I went up uh, to Humboldt County uh, one summer for a week uh, with the uh, Richmond Police Department. They sent a bunch of us up there, and uh, we were chopping down plants. And, oh, I bet you and, felt and really them. good about that, Phil. You oh, know yeah, what? They, they still have those in Probably California, too. <laughs> what? They still have them. They, yeah. they still have yeah. the cutting down of uh, plants. They yeah, yeah. they were showing that on the 60 Minutes right. piece. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what... That's and what I, and I, as I watched it, I don't know, Josh, if you got the same feeling I did. I, I got the same feeling that you seem to have, have gotten out right. of it about, do you feel good about this? Do you really feel <laughs> good about this? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, oh, we're all safer today because there's less of those fucking marijuana plants. You know what I mean? Like, like hey, I got like 400,000 guns over here and they're all for sale and you could come buy some, but... Don't you smoke any of that fucking weed? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> break. Well, if, if you want to stop the rapes and you know and uh, you know women being assaulted, you just got to get the marijuana off the street. I guess. Yeah. Have you ever no, I mean, you're I'm not. You're saying, uh, not serious. I saw the movie. You, oh, the, you, yeah. Okay. I, I didn't the, think you the, were serious. The one guy still. that they talked to on Alex 60 Minutes. Movie was basically saying that if you wanted to legally grow marijuana in California, the stack of paperwork is about this motherfucking thick. <laughs> you got to spend like 800 gajillion fucking dollars a year to be able to do it. But, you know, if I want to set up a tent on the curb and sell fucking guns, it's like, yeah, a gun for you, a gun for you, two guns You'll for you. you get a gun. They're probably going to get one gun. free today. You know, I mean, get the fuck out. I mean, what the, what the fuck are we worried about this shit for? Right, I mean, it's, it's Texas. Texas. fucking weed. <laughs> I mean... I mean, is there like a is there like a, a a fucking epidemic of people getting high and fucking doing something? I mean, I'm just not aware of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, have, aren't we aren't we a little bit over that discussion about marijuana being dangerous? No, it's sixty two now. It ought to be. It's huh? a um, what do they call it? A gateway drug. That's what I mean, they used to tell us in school. We had milk. Next, a after that, drug. you'll be doing aspirin and Milky it's Way so bars. I'm hungry. Gateway to fucking euphoria and happiness. God forbid we all have that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Yeah, they made you watch that. the... What? It's true. I mean, it, we, we, they used to make us uh, watch that drug thing, the gateway drug. They used to put the egg in the my, thing. By the way, it's getting towards the end of the show here. So let me... Is it? <laughs> Six to two. Might as well. Hey, man, I got I to gotta do away with this fan up here. So I can't... With the fan. Tell Echo to turn it's it almost off. like they want to put the fear in you for everything, like in life. Like the, uh, I guess when you're a kid or when you get older, like don't do this and don't do. You're afraid to do anything. You know that's what? I don't want to work. Catholic. For something I know I don't want to no, do. No, that's just because you're Catholic. If you're Catholic, they use fear. You know. Oh, you if think? you do this, you're gonna wear glasses. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah that's all. <laughs> you'll go you'll blind. blind. You'll go blind. But I, I just did it till I wore glasses. You yeah. know. Uh, Alex, Alex is uh, yeah. is is doing illegal shit. Here's 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 doper's language. Okay, it's it's a word that only appears when you're smoking pot, Good and shit. that's ear. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I would see things differently. Hi, I might like Trump. 
No, I doubt it. I probably hate one. There isn't <laughs> enough dope in the world to do that, Tony. Yeah, there's, 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 there's no such fucking drug. No, there is no such. By the way, tomorrow, I, I, I'm saving this for the end of the show because, you know, I, I don't want uh, Phil to get apoplectic. But tomorrow, it looks like the vote uh, is going to happen about... Uh, Opening impeachment to, to the and uh, it's on Halloween. That's funny. Yeah, means yeah. nothing. But opening, uh, opening kangaroo uh, court. No, it isn't a kangaroo <laughs> court. They're opening it up so that the public can see it now, and so oh, it can well, be. Well, that's very nice. It's just that they're not going to let uh, let the Republicans subpoena any witnesses. Yes, they or will. Cross yes, they will. Oh, they yes, they will. They can ask, but then they no. Yes, they yes they will, they folks. Yeah. Well, witness uh, they Phil? can't subpoena is the whistleblower. Well, no, there's other witnesses, too, that, uh, you know. And there's a rumor, there's a rumor tomorrow that, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Bolton. Bolton's going to be uh, testifying. Officer and, Joe Bolton? Yeah. And if Bolton <laughs> testifies tomorrow, that is going to be a bombshell. I think Bolton, you know, because he got fired, he's a, he's a you know, but he's... He's got his own agenda. Can you imagine, you know, Bolton nobody wants war truth. with everybody. Listen, nobody Listen, here, but, but, nobody here, here on this panel that. in their but, wildest imaginations ever liked, I don't think he, I don't think liked, liked Bolton. Did you like Bolton, Charlie? Heck no. Uh, did you like Bolton, uh, Jeff? So no. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's the problem, Josh. I mean, did you like? He's going to go up there and testify tomorrow, and immediately afterward, there's going to be this long train of running him down by the Republican Party. Yeah. Who, yeah. who, who on this date, 12 years ago, but, when he was in charge working for George Bush, thought he was the Christ. But on the on the oh, wait a minute, on the other on the other hand on the other hand on the other hand. Uh, you're going to have nothing but a bunch of left wingers running around suddenly loving Bolton. <laughs> Right. You know, it's strange. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, I got a feeling that nothing's going to come of it, and it's going to be more egg on their face like the Mueller thing. The I think the impeachment's going to happen. That's going to happen. It's not going to no. happen in the Senate. The only reason this, is, they... this is all Wait a minute. shit show. Let somebody else talk, Phil. Charlie was trying to talk there. The only reason Mueller didn't go anywhere is because the, the DOJ has this ridiculous policy that you can't indict the president. That's the only reason Mueller didn't yeah. Mueller pointed out ten separate instances where he was he did obstruction of justice. Okay, now Phil, because I didn't, I just wanted to let uh, Charlie get in there because he hadn't said anything tonight. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, we'll we'll see. You know, you're you're counting your eggs before they hatch. You know, your chickens. Uh, and uh, this has been very, very common uh, with this whole uh, witch hunt. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You know, Bolton's going to be asked questions. He's going to answer those questions. And I don't think the only thing Bolton had is he wanted to go in and bomb everybody. And Trump, uh, mm -hmm. to his credit, said, no, we're not going to do that. And uh, so, you know, Bolton's out. It, it was He had a Oops, disagreement. Yeah. Some people said he disagreed with uh, Giuliani. Uh, I don't know that that would have caused Trump to fire him. We've just been joined by Bree, by the way. So, And his ceiling tiles. And his uh, ceiling saying, tiles. Like, if, Once again, but, something that's more disgusting than Tony's wallpaper is your ceiling. No, I like the butterfly <laughs> in, the, in the light. There's, there's a butterfly up there. Is there a butterfly up there? Hmm. It's a reflection, he says. But I mean, I, I guess I just have problems with some of those arguments because where would have been the criticism when Trump hired John Bolton? I mean, it was. all these things were known. Of, well, I mean, by people yeah. in the Republican Party, all these things were known about John Bolton when he got, I mean, if, if there was ever a man who had fucking warmonger tattooed on his fucking forehead, it would be fucking John Bolton. I yeah. mean, yet they hired him. I don't understand. Exactly. I mean, they, exactly. they, 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 they nominate a guy to be a, an ambassador and he goes and he testifies before the Senate today mm -hmm. and he says disparaging things about Rudy Giuliani. And then they put out a tweet that says, oh, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Wait, you just told me the guy that you fucking nominated to be the ambassador to a very important country has no idea what he's talking about. I mean, you run down your own fucking people. I don't understand. I mean, he was a UN ambassador. What the fuck sense does Bush. that make? 
he's done that shit with everybody. Well, but you know, if he, he was good, if time. he was good enough at one point, why isn't he good enough now? I think yeah, that's what you're saying. Twenty minutes ago, <laughs> sometimes you give people power and they abuse it. You know, and yeah, he, we he, know. He, yeah, we know. Was, uh, we're quite aware of that, Phil. That's what we're there's, arguing there's one here. One particular person in particular that does that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. yeah, never Trump. No, 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 <laughs> no. I love how you get your talking points now from Donald Trump. That never Trumper thing. <laughs> came out yeah, again no but i just i just it's not that. like you made it up here the double entendre i i you know i didn't say you're a never trumper i said never trump okay, you know, the nationals are he wouldn't outs do away that from winning what how far are they away from winning three outs away yes yep. we go to malaysia now for our sports report and an update on the world series <laughs> six to two <laughs> what a small world this has become right Bree? yeah you know, and you can sit there. You know, there's so many issues that happen in these games where I have a lot of questions about them. And, you know, and nobody. sometimes they talk about them and sometimes they don't. <clears throat> but um, you have a sports Emmy, Alex, so I guess I could ask you. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> That's like asking Bolton if he wants Pete's. Well, there was, there was one, uh, one of the games, uh, maybe two games ago, I can't remember, maybe it was last game, where Washington, uh, one of the players got in a rundown between third base and home plate. Mm -hmm. And the Astros essentially, uh, I guess the pitcher the went to cover home plate or something. And he was standing right in front of home plate as they got into a rundown. Now, if the Nationals player had continued to home, he would have made it, but he would have to knock the guy out of the way. My thought was, they, I mean, there's some new rule that you can't block the plate when the runner is going to the plate. But the guy was clearly standing up directly in the path. So, in a, you know, to me, he should have been able to push the guy out of the way and score did the he, run. Did he have the ball? He did not. He was waiting for the ball to come. Oh, okay. And the, you know, the other guy was holding it as he was trying to get him to, to commit to a way. Yeah. And eventually he pulled back and the third baseman tagged him. But he only pulled back because, because I felt because the guy was standing right in the pathway, he should have just knocked him over and scored. Mm. Well, that's called obstruction. That's, that sounds like a Republican move. Uh, at the risk of losing my <laughs> Emmy, I don't understand a word of what you just said. Uh, you translate it to food. The guy Two was outs. in the way of the plate. You want what's on the plate, I so see. you knock the guy out of the way and you take the food. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. But well, now I understand. Right, of course. Yeah, you know, when it comes down to food, that's something I can easily yeah. understand. Yeah, you said you can't eat this. You know, I was talking. I was talking. I, I was talking to Stephen Pearl tonight, and if it turns out I have prostate cancer and that I'm going to die and it's terminal, uh, I, it, it's heroin time for me, <laughs> and it's uh, everything I ever wanted to eat time for me. You know, yeah. but I probably won't be that lucky. You know. you know, sugar <coughs> feeds the cancer. So, uh, I, you know, you haven't really had much in the way of carbohydrates in several years. Uh -huh. So I, I think you're doing yourself uh, a, a great service by not going for the carbs. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I probably don't have the bad, can C. The bad cancer. You know. oh. so, very, Is it a good cancer? No, it's slow growing. Yeah, you know, you were like Alan Arkin. When they opened up the show, the Kaminsky second season, he says to Michael Douglas, did you ever have problems with Two words, outs. finding, you know, finding yeah. a word? Yeah. And uh, it reminded me of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, and you know what happens more because of this drug I'm taking? Mm -hmm. This this gets me, although I have been learning, I've been, Phil, Jeff will uh, understand this. I've been relearning how to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that under okay. this drug, I can do it, okay? And I just, I just, it's like the reason I was having trouble with a lot of things was because I was going under the misassumption that uh, all this came easy to me. And it yeah. did, but it doesn't now. So I have to relearn the fact that I have to think ahead of doing something before I do it. You know, where before I was just, I was doing it out of, uh, memory, you know, memory, sense memory. Road memory. Yeah. Yeah. Think of it as a chess game. 
you know, and you just got to think a few moves ahead. I never thought a few moves ahead in chess, and that's why I was so fucking lousy at it. One strike away. <laughs> huh? Yeah. One, one stri strike away. One strike oh, away. Full we're, count. Full this count. is, this is a nine. first, ladies and gentlemen. We're actually, <clears throat> by the way, you do know, uh, you do know. You can't repeat baseball stuff? No, well, you, you are not allowed to do a recreation or description of the game without the written permission yeah. of the right. commissioner of baseball, who is now who is it? Last yeah, name you don't know. Slide. The last name I remember is Peter Uberoff, but I think that was a couple of. No, he's not there anymore. I know that. What? I know Uberoff's not anymore, but yeah. I don't know who yeah. is now. Yeah, but you know who's uh, the softball Joe commissioner? But anyway, who would have thought that we would be getting Joe sports Torrey. reports from Malaysia on what's <laughs> happening? Joe now, since That's it, you're competing against Alex, I had to I had to put it on my laptop so that I could. Uh, called you on my iPad. I usually watch on my iPad. So what does this guy Joe Torre do? Play against the Wigs? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And he's out in the Nationals and what? Game over. Game, Game over? over oh, hey, hey, America Detroit. beat, uh, uh, the United States beat the getting the, uh, the, 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 the did you, is it game over win. yet where you are? Bree? Texas, they beat the Texans. Bree? What? I, I, is it over where you are? The game? Yes, it's oh. done. Okay, how fast? How how fast was it? Oh, how long ago was it over? Because because Ke Kevin called it before you did. Twenty seconds ago, I don't know. Oh, I think he's ahead of you. I think we're ahead of you a little bit. <coughs> you know, although oh, you what do you do? You get it off? You get it off the internet? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but I, well, I paused it while I called you. No, oh, I see. Oh, okay, but. Um, Okay. Well, anyway, so the it's all over. So now I will the Nationals go to the White House and visit Trump? Uh, you know, and uh, or are they going to make a stink? I think they need an opportunity, another opportunity to boo him. Well, yeah. I, I I got a feeling that they'll go to the White House, and I got a feeling he'll invite them. I uh, have you know, a feeling I'm, he isn't going to have anything to do with baseball ever again. Ever again. <laughs> well, did you hear the? Uh, oh, you probably didn't. I don't know if you listened to. Uh, you watch Colbert? No. Here. Well, uh, don't 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 play something from the Colbert show because that would oh, be okay. yeah get him in trouble. But I mean the the bigger question would be they usually don't do these visits for four or five months until after it's all done. Sometimes not even till the next season. So the bigger question is, will Trump even be president when they visit? <laughs> <the White House? laughs> yeah. They don't have to travel far. You know, yeah. they're they're right there. Yeah. But they take the bus and boom, they show up at the White House. Well, well I mean, they typically wait until the following season. A lot of times, also, like spring training or something like that. I mean, when they're all together because all these people live all over. Also, the, uh, yeah. also the Nationals have to take into consideration that at their home game, he was booed roundly. Okay. Exactly. And <laughs> wait a minute, let me finish, Phil, before you jump in. He, I just did this with my head. I, I know, I get scared. Uh, <laughs> it's sense memory. Uh, um, uh, that they, they know how badly he got booed in their stadium to their home crowd that maybe they don't want to go to the White House because that would give them a bad rep with their, with their, uh, with their the, audience. The Texas you know? crowd would never boo Trump. You know, they're, they're red, true and true. You don't know, Phil. You know, I mean, I, I this man. They does, elected Ted th Cruz. This Come man, on. this man, <laughs> this did. man attempts at every juncture to make sure that he's not put in harm's way so far as being humiliated. And that's why he so hated being at that correspondence dinner years ago when Obama made some jokes about him. The, he, he, the day he decided to go after Obama was the day Obama made those jokes at the correspondence yeah. dinner, which that's what you do. Didn't he go after Obama before that with the uh, birther thing? I think so, yeah. 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 Now, he's been after Obama for a while, and rightfully so. Yeah, right. Because he really because to show how smart he was, he probably would have been smarter to just go to a Houston game instead of a what Nationals game. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I don't know if I'm speaking for Donald, I, I don't know pitch. if I'm speaking for Donald Trump when I say he was an uppity Negro. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think 
he <laughs> will ever throw out the first pitch. I think, you know, he's very athletic. He plays golf. Yeah, he golf. Would throw oh, yeah. It, 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 he doesn't pe- play aggressive golf because that, look at the paunch on that guy. That's well, that's, he, would, he would throw it halfway and have his assistant throw it the other way. We half. haven't had a president <laughs> that fast since, uh, I don't know, Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, uh, yeah, didn't uh, Bush throw out a, a ball? And yeah. He got it over the plate. Yeah. 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 yeah That's but about every other president has. Yeah, but he, this guy won't go to the correspondence dinner. He doesn't want to be ribbed. You know. <laughs> he doesn't want the rubber chicken. You know. But I mean, he doesn't. He want... only likes Kentucky Fried. No, but he doesn't. Right. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he, like he, he, he doesn't want to be ribbed. You know, and uh, uh, he doesn't. He's not going to another baseball game. He's not going to. He's not putting himself in that kind of situation ever again. I was surprised he was going to do it in the first place. I don't blame him. Well, not unless I, he sells tickets to it. The, yeah. Well, but you see, when he holds yeah. when he holds those rallies, it's a false sense of your popularity because yeah, you fill up a stadium, so big deal. You know, well, instead, why don't you why don't you quit quit the presidency and take your comedy act on the road? You could sell out auditoriums. How right? many people actually booed him? At the uh, you know the lock them up a lot, thing. a, a lot, lot more than twenty thousand. That's for yeah. sure. Well, how, how many definitely. people were at the at the game? How many people are in that stadium? Oh, uh, somewhere around fifty or sixty thousand, I would think. <laughs> All right, and you know, even based on the population, uh, that would mean that half of the people Phil, are Democrats. It, if you listen to it, it looked it sounded almost like everybody was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know they they have these, and then they went into the chair of teams. lock him up, lock him up, and that one was you could definitely yeah. hear that that was at least half a well, stadium. It was all about prison reform, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know they're yelling lock him up. Well, this is they, well. They it, do you ever stop to think reform. of the reason why he supports prison reform? Is he maybe the subject of it someday? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're gonna learn. Uh, uh, just, I, they're, I was they're actually surprised. Him. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. What? I was just surprised that he had time to go to the game. I mean, I thought he was busy killing Al Baghdadi. Al Baghdadi. You know, <laughs> and the number three guy. I had to get Al Baghdadi. I mean, they kept coming to me and saying, Al Baghdadi. And I said, bring me Al Baghdadi. I, 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 I said, I sir, go get some sir I, I've my got doggy. Al Baghdadi. Hey, do you know uh, how they got the pictures of Al Baghdadi whimpering and crying running down the tunnel? They had a GoPro on the dog. Yeah, right. yeah and, 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 and Trump was giving him doggy treats, too, right? Yeah. Uh, did, did, I, I didn't see any video of Baghdadi running and whimpering. The president said so. He was whimpering. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the president, the, president acts like, and the president acts like he was part of the raid and that he was watching this as it was happening. He wasn't watching it as it was happening. He was playing golf. He was playing golf. Stream. He saw a video of it later. Yeah, of, of the dog cam that was running down. The <laughs> and by the way, to, the for the president to call him Watch a coward, YouTube. to call yeah. him a coward, the, the guy did have a suicide vest on him, and he did blow it up. So, I mean, what kind of coward is that? Uh, that's a coward that doesn't want to get caught. Oh, geez. Yeah, okay, so if you get caught, you're not a coward? And and he kills three of his kids. Well, that was the, that was a big mistake that he did. Yeah. That you yeah. know the guy beheaded people. He, I was know he was terrible. Look, you don't have to. You don't have to, you, you don't have to sell me. You don't have to sell me on how bad this guy was. He was taking gay people and throwing them off buildings. You know. Yeah. So. Anyway, hey, listen, that's uh, that's a, that's a theme. Oh, thank God, it's the theme, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, anyone else in 2020? Thank you so much, Kevin, for that tonight. Huh? I'm kidding. Yeah. You still got 15 minutes. No, Bang that's my ready. my career has 15 minutes. Uh, 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 Josh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, let me let me let me get everybody in the picture so I can say goodbye to everybody. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Phil, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, uh, 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 Tony. But a Um Thank you very much, Charlie. And of course, uh, our old friend uh, who is over there in the, in in Malaysia, wow. Bree, uh, who is waving his cap there. And I will wave my hand, and if you'll all wave goodbye, uh, we can uh, say goodbye to each other, okay? That's our citizens panel, folks, uh, for tonight. 
uh, let me just uh, get rid of them here. So the next guy, who is Jack Bishop, who has a thing called the intersection, can come up next and use the Skype lines as well. Be sure to stick around and call him. He could use your input. Uh, that's it for me. See you again tomorrow night. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any exchange because da Damien has still been, uh, been forced to move out of his home because of the fires. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll see you again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.